Square Enix Montreal has been killing it with their Go games. Of course, we had Tomb Raider Go and Hitman Go, their newest one, Pokemon Go, but now we have got uh, uh, Deus Ex Go. So I know Pokemon Go is not yours, but uh, hats off to them for yeah. stealing your Go name, right? Go isn't uh, trademarkable. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's not. just a word. <laughs> Our Go is more about the the, the older, oldest game in the world, the Go. Oh, like the old uh, board game. The old board game. That was where our Go came from. So. Okay, well, I like I like your Go a little <laughs> bit better. And it was first on the scene. This is Etienne, and he is the creative director on Deus Ex Go. And Deus Ex, for all of these other games that you have, like Hitman, I think, made sense. Tomb Raider is really fun and a great surprise. But Deus Ex seems like the perfect game to kind of move into this sort of more tactical board game type strategy design that you've got for this title. Was it a clear choice as soon as you were sort of going down this tack? When we started th thinking about what it might be, it's something that came clear to us very quickly, how rich the mechanics were in this X, how we could use them in a turn-based setting, how we could make that work, mm -hmm. how to use the augments, the hacking, all of that. So yes, for us too, it was like really fun to start playing with these mechanics in a different kind of setting, like gameplay-wise. How much was this based on the success, I think, of, of the first, the Hitman Go? Like, did that sort of set everything up? And then when you have a game like that, and Square Enix has a lot of different properties out there, how do you stop yourself from just, okay, we need a Kingdom Hearts Go, we need a, we need a Final Fantasy Go. How do you just sort of shrink it down to Just Cause Go? You know, like, mm -hmm. how do you make sure that you go in the right pecking order? Yeah, uh, that's a good question because most of all, it's always came from us, like from the people who would make the game. It's never been like, we have to do this now, like it's such a chore or anything. Yeah. It's like what makes sense, what is fun, and until it doesn't anymore, uh, we're gonna make them. I, I could, like, I can't say anything about like the next projects or anything, yeah. but if it's not go, it's not gonna be go for a while. And uh, if it is, it's gonna be like, it, it has to make sense first. You guys gotta wanna make it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. How do you design one of these games? Is that, I mean, they seem like they could be actual board games. Do you guys start kind of pen and paper and oh. and work every puzzle out sort of that way, and then you get it into the computer? How do you do it? We, we don't do that. Yeah. Uh, we did prototype a lot on paper, yeah. and just because it's so much easier than coding everything. Sure. And when you've played a little bit with the paper prototypes, you have a better idea of where we're gonna go coding it, right? But after that's done, uh, we don't actually create all the puzzles in paper, right? Uh, especially since with uh, this X Go, we have this puzzle maker coming where yeah. the editor is really straightforward and really intuitive to use. It's what we use every day and it works on iPad and iPhone and all of that. It's, it works really well. So obviously this becomes easier to create puzzles on as the project at, like goes forward. Yeah. But at the start of it, we always play with paper and tokens and stuff. Yeah. We're talking about hacking and diving into some sort of, you know, really cool computer technology in Deus Ex Go. Uh, perfect kind of fodder for tablet computing. What, what are you guys kind of doing with this game that you haven't done before and it's really only kind of possible with a, a brand and a, and a franchise like Deus Ex? Well, the obvious answer is the hacking, right? Yeah. You, you, the way you hack in the game is way different than the way you hack in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, but it's still the same spirit. You get to a terminal which you can hack and uh, with that terminal you can trace lines towards different gameplay elements in the level and you can only hack one thing at a time it has this strategic element to it and it's something that's very tactile because on a touch screen like this it's really fun to trace lines across a level and actually feel like you're reaching in and changing how the level works so that's just something really that we haven't done before in the other go games you guys did something cool at uh, the E3 Judges event that I was at, and I uh, was with my buddies uh, Steve Tilley and Ben Silverman, and we were all sort of uh, playing independently, mm -hmm. but we were racing each other to beat yeah. specific uh, levels and get as far into the game, into the demo that you guys provided us. Mm -hmm. Is there that kind of element in the core game? Is there a way to kind of compete or compare yourself to other players? 
not at the moment. It's yeah. still a very uh, single player focused experience right now. But with the release of the Puzzle Maker later on, mm -hmm. uh, we we have ideas on how to tackle that because it's something that comes out a lot when we play the game. Sure. Because uh, yeah, it counts how many moves and your exactly. whole strike, right? Yeah. And that's where, yeah, the, the moves thing is a big thing because if I create a puzzle which I can solve in like 20 moves yeah. and you beat it like and you do 18 moves I'm gonna want to know sure. like what happened there yeah. and there's this natural kind of competition that comes into creating a level you don't want to beat people with your level you want to challenge them with your level so it, it's a way different multiplayer experience than like something like a competitive like Halo or something For it's sure. it's it's a, a it's a place where people contribute and challenge each other so it's way more I don't know, it's kind of healthier to have that kind of challenging back and forth thing. It's a cerebral challenge. Yeah. You mentioned Go, the board game, as an inspiration for this, and I'm wondering, are there other board games, are there other pen and paper, or other video games that kind of, you know, kind of all sort of became grist for the mill to create the, the now Go franchise that you guys have over there? Well, when we say like the old board game Go, it's more about like the very the extreme simplicity of it mm. that creates complexity down the line. You know, like you can't until recently a computer couldn't couldn't actually beat humans at Go, right? Yeah. Until like well, that's all spring. over. It's all over. Yeah, the clock is ticking on us. I know. It's always been. Ticking. And you guys are just making fun little fantasy games, right. and meanwhile the robots are yeah. coming. We're dead. Yeah, We're all gonna get. Yeah, that's happening. Yeah. But um, it's more about the simplicity and like having something really elegant that plays well, that that anybody can look at and understand, but still having something complex come out of it. So that's more of a the the go word comes more from a conceptual kind of mm. idea. So that, there's no direct correlation or direct influence that that you can really pinpoint. Not in a gameplay level, no, yeah. because nothing from go actually comes in the in Hitman Go or Larkrum Go, it's more about the board game feel and all of that. Deus Ex is, uh, you know, renowned, the whole franchise, every game, right from uh, the Warren Spector original for uh, terrific stories and threaded stories with lots of different sort of mm -hmm. options and characters to talk with. Is that a part of this game too? Are we actually getting a story with Deus Ex Go? There's a narrative part of it, mm -hmm. but at some point during the project we had to focus, like decide what's going to be the focus of the game. Yeah. And in this case, it was about making a puzzle game first. It has to be a good puzzle game. It had to make sense. The systems had to be something that were fun to play with and because of that the narrative isn't branching or it's not like super complex with like uh, thousands of lines of dialogue and all of that but we like knowing that this X has this huge like pillar that is narrative we had to do something yeah. like to to pay some kind of homage to that in the game so we definitely have a story and we even like uh, pitched with them and like discussed with them and we had the writer come help on the what the story would be um, but it still very much has to be simple and kind of graspable and like easily sure. just like understandable as Go games are. So we had to tone down some of the more complex uh, features of the series, yeah. Is, are, are there any ties to the fiction or to the design of this to, you know, what we might see in Mankind Divided or the comic books or yeah. Breach or anything sort of in there? It is very much tied to the universe. So this, uh, this X-Go happens just before Mankind Divided. So um, Jensen is undercover in Task Force 29 working with the collective and that's kind of the the initial state status of things and because the game happens before mankind divided kind of it's kind of more of a slice of life jensen before the big events right right it's more of what he does when he doesn't just a slice of life where he goes around assassinating bad dudes and <laughs> hacking into killer robots and stuff discovering conspiracy yeah. it's just a monday for adam jensen absolutely right, okay. that's the idea yeah, yeah. yeah. it's on mobile it's it has to be simpler it has to be more something you can pick up and go and yeah. stop playing for a while and then come back to it and it still makes sense. Uh, it's wonderful design. I'm wondering now that you guys you guys have a, a franchise, a full on, you know, series of these things now. Are you thinking of ways uh, you know, like Super Smash Brothers of uh, making a, uh, you know, a Square Enix go and throwing in a bunch of different characters and building up a, a, a super go huge go. metagame. Yeah, Go-Go. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> naming it right there. <laughs> no, it's it's came back a few times. Uh, at this point, no, I, we're not planning any, on anything like that. We yeah. still take the project and pitch the project internally and we still make the ones that we like the most yeah. at this level because that's the project that has the most chance of actually being the best. Yes. Uh, is the one that we want to make, we're excited by, and we uh, 
uh, we still go in that direction. And if somebody ever pitches that and it makes sense for people around them to actually create that, it's going to happen. But I think that'd be hilarious. Right well, Deus Ex is a, uh, a true uh, transmedia sensation right now, or at least mm -hmm. I think Square Enix and all of the different divisions hope that it will be. There's yeah. clothing, you can actually buy a physical mm -hmm. arm, there's comic books, there's a movie in the way. What about an act? Yeah, and no. it was nobody tells me anything about okay. it, but I've heard that there is. <laughs> uh, what about a, uh, an actual physical board game? Is that something that you guys have discussed? Uh, it, it would be so costly to make. Uh, we, we actually recreated the first level in, uh, in Hit and Go. Mm -hmm. and we have a physical board of it in the office. That's cool. I think that for now it's as far as it's going to go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Stick with the video games? Yeah. You're telling me that making a video game is cheaper than making a, a physical board game? Uh, for you guys. And uh, down, the, down the line also, like, we don't have to produce every single board game that sure. we sell, right, right. physically, okay. you know? All right. We make the game once and then we... Dude, nobody said we we're get, gonna get into math in this interview, okay? <laughs> All right, so when, when are people gonna be able to uh, download Deus Ex Go? It's coming out this summer for, this summer. Yeah, for iOS and Android. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.